Find a kiss. George? Hello, my fellow sniffers and marlings. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Leo, and this is Jersey, and we want to welcome you back to my channel. Jersey just literally picked up my hand and demanded that I give her a head scratch. Oh, did you hear that small little helicopter? Well, that was none other than my Picasso. Okay, we're in for it today. Some good old uh, bird crazy fun. Today, I thought we would go back to old school style and I would give you an update on what it's like to live with my little Leo here. Now, for those of you who are just tuning in, let me give you a little bit of backstory. Yes, <gasps> stop. Okay, well, the first thing you need to know is he's a bully. Okay, this is great though. We're getting Jersey in a video. I have a lot of things to share with you guys. First of all, I've been doing a lot of vlog style videos and I'm really enjoying those and I hope you guys are too. But sometimes it's nice to come back here and just give you some updates, talk to you guys, see how things are going. So, so here he is, Leo. For those of you who don't know, YouTube actually got me Leo. Well, my fans all pulled together and decided that I should have this wonderful, beautiful bird, even though I already had five large parrots. And we got a lot to talk about about Leo. Now, if you're interested in my first video with Leo, I put the link below. Now, although I said I already had five birds, I gotta tell you about this guy. The first thing I should tell you about is that he is the perfect sixth bird to a flock. Why do I say that? Because I swear five birds would have been at my limit. But to have six, I would need to have a very special kind of calm, beautiful, sweet personality. And that's exactly what I have. First of all, let's talk about Leo's plucking. Those of you who know the Leo story, you know that Leo has a little tiny bit of a plucking problem, especially in his back. They told me at the store that I got him from that in fact he was so plucked, they didn't realize that he even had these yellow feathers here coming in. His owner died previously, so he was probably very upset about that and he still gets a little bit stress sometimes. So although he does it a lot less, I do catch him wanting to pluck when I'm with the other birds, like he's getting nervous right now, or when I'm talking to someone else, which is a habit that we really got to work on through socialization and making him know that it's okay and teaching him how to integrate with the rest of the flock. So as far as his plucking, I think there's a lot of things that we can do for improvement. I've been giving him his Avicom and Featherific, and I have noticed some improvements, but as you see, he gets very jealous. Let's give you a recap in the life of Leo. When Leo came home from the beginning, he was very, very quiet. He basically didn't say anything. He also didn't really move. He loved to be on me. He loved to cuddle. He loved head scratches. He was open to people touching him, especially women. He's okay with men holding him, but they don't really have some of the same rights that women do when they approach him, but nobody has the same rights that little girls do. Leo loves loves little girls. I would love to know in his backstory what it is with little girls. Now I mentioned that Leo has been very, very quiet. Well, Leo doesn't really talk. I haven't heard him say anything, but then again, I kind of have. Do you guys remember the video I made on the Like app where I was able to get some footage of Leo talking, kind of arguing, but I was upstairs? <sighs> first thing that I ever heard Leo do, and he started doing it when I was out of the room. Sometimes birds like to practice what they know or hide what they know, but they want to vocalize, but they want to do it when you're not there. One thing that really activates this in Leo is actually a constant noise. 
I'm kind of weird and OCD and addicted to hair dryers. So I just go turn on my hair dryer and hang out with it. But a lot of the times if I leave it on and Leo can't see me, that's when he starts talking. And he also likes to whistle. I do believe that Leo can be a great talker, but he just hasn't shown it to me yet. What I honestly think from having birds for a very long time about Leo is that he's very shy. I think he will definitely grow into a bird that does a lot more and says a lot more than he shows right now but it's possible that it was very traumatic for him because as you can see he's so loving so whoever had him before had to have taken really good care of him so I'm assuming the death of his owner and companion really took a toll on him and that's why he's so quiet right now he appears to be a dream bird like even my mom adores him because he just sits Leo is the type of bird that if I forgot to lock the cage or left him on a stand and came back in four hours, Leo would be in the same spot. He doesn't damage things. He doesn't chew things. In fact, he doesn't even play with toys. I can't hand Leo anything and watch him play with it. It's kind of a shame because I want him to be busy and able to entertain himself and like to forage, but he's just not interested in anything as of yet. I have seen him take some initiative to play with things like pens and if he does pick something up that I really kind of don't want him to pick up but if it's not dangerous I will let him because I just want to see where he's going with it. I want to encourage him to get out of his comfort zone. Overall I would say that Leo's a very shy bird but he's also becoming very very possessive. So before where he was kind of friendly to everybody else, now he's very protective over me. Leo and I spend a lot of time alone together because as you know, Leo has been in sort of like a quarantine. He's good to go now. He doesn't have to be in it, but he doesn't really go into the aviary with the rest of the birds, which is what I call their preschool or daycare. So he spends a lot of alone time with me hanging out, making videos, pretty much a working bird. He's really good at making review videos with me because he just sits and chills and he really is on his best behaviors. And therefore, with all this alone time, he's becoming very possessive. What I need to be doing to get him out of that is socializing him more. So most of the day, I'm just here and there's no one to really socialize with him. But every time someone comes over, I do make sure that Leo gets some time with them. Even if it's a guy and someone like my dad, I let Leo just sit on their lap. I say, don't be too invasive with Leo. You don't want to make him angry because after all, you are a guy, but just let him sit there and show him that sitting on strangers is okay. Actually not strangers, but just somebody else. It's part of socialization. Sometimes if you want to socialize a bird, you want to make sure that the other person knows that they don't have to touch the bird or come at the bird or try to get a head scratch to be satisfied. The bird can just sit on somebody's knee while they're on their phone or hanging out. That's what I do with Leo when my dad is in town and when my brother comes into town, that's probably what I'm going to do. When my sister comes in, I make sure that they actively have a lot of alone time because my sister just loves Leo, but Harry, my sister's dog, is very jealous of him. So life so far has been pretty easy and pretty chill. He loves love, as you could see. I'm in love with his big head. If you saw me take Leo to Bird Mart, he is the best. He's basically to little girls what Jersey is to guys, which is amazing. Right, Jersey? Jersey, do you know you're in a video? So I basically have these two birds to go with me and meet you guys when you're able to come to my meet and greets Then you can definitely meet Leo and Jersey. So it's been really cool I have introduced Leo to some little girls ever since bird mart and he is crazy man Like he does not want to get off of them. I put Leo on my niece. So he gets nervous He just wants to play let him come Gentle, isn't he? He tickles. That's it. Put your hand down. There you go. Look, Michaela, watch. Feels good, no?
and then I tried to take him off and he was so angry. I was like, wow. Because for Leo not to come to me, back to the person that he loves, means that he really enjoys where he is. It's like he's a bird for kids. But I wanna tell you guys the craziest thing. When we were doing that like app video, my mom was babysitting, if you'll remember, Tracy's baby, Bella. When I was editing the video late at night, my mom came in with Bella and Leo's body language showed that he was was dying to go be next to Bella, but Bella's not a little girl, she's a baby. So I don't know what Leo's intentions are. So I told my mom she basically shouldn't be in the room with the baby, so my mom left and that was that. When I went out of town, I got a video text from Tracy and my sister. And in the video, Leo was playing with Bella. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Basically, my sister was on the scene and they were all playing and they had nothing but time to focus on the situation. And we found out that Leo really likes Bella and he was fine with her, but I didn't know if he was just next to her. I had no idea what the situation was. So the other day after I came back, my friend Tracy came to visit and she came with her baby. And when she entered the house with Bella, Leo made the exact noise that he does when he sees Rocky. Which, by the way, for those of you who haven't been following the Leo story, he loves my macaw Rocky. And he did that when he saw Bella. So I was like, oh man. So anyway, I'm sitting down with Tracy and we're having like girl chat and it's a Saturday. And then suddenly George comes in and he goes, where's Leo? And I go, in his cage. He goes, no he isn't. You're lying. He's underneath the covers. Because I had like blankets over me. And George just assumed that I was kind of like horrible. Leo under there to get some cuddles, but I wasn't. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Stop joking with me. He's like, Leo's not in the cage. Leo doesn't go anywhere. Leo stays put. And then I'm like, yeah, just look harder. Cause you know how men are, no offense to anybody, but they just like don't see things in front of them. And for him to even notice that Leo was missing being as quiet as he is, I was pretty surprised. Like where's Leo gonna go? Leo has practically never went on the floor by himself, except when I come home. And then George goes, oh my God, there he is. And what was he doing? He was climbing up the couch via my phone charger on his way to override Tracy and take his place next to Bella. So since I had nothing but time to monitor the situation, over comes Leo marching over to Bella. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, don't let him next to her. And Tracy goes, no, it's okay. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, don't worry, watch. And Leo, like ever so gently like touched her toes. And then she kind of pet him. She's like eight months old. She kind of pet him and I guided her. I held her hand. And next thing you know, she's petting him. She understands and he's so gentle. And I'm like, wow. So then I bring him next to me and he's kind of upset about it. He wants to be next to the baby. And he's like touching her toes and she's smiling and she loves it because she loves birds because she's a little Leo and she was supposed to be born on my birthday. So anyway, she's going to be a bird lover. Now Leo's going to go down and distract Picasso who's actually sleeping and bully Jersey. That's another thing that we got to talk about. Reminds me. Anyway. So Leo just comes over and hangs out with Bella. And a little while later, Bella starts crying and Leo goes over and gets mad at Tracy. He's very protective. He doesn't want Tracy to go next to Bella. So next thing, it's me, Bella, and Leo hanging out. And Bella's hungry, so she needs a bottle, but Leo doesn't want Tracy to do it. He wants me to do it. So next thing you know, I'm feeding Bella with Leo, and Leo's ever so happy, like in between me, Bella, and the bottle. And there I am being all maternal and stuff because Leo likes babies. It's the weirdest thing. So I think that is just unbelievable and amazing. Like what bird has a thing for babies and little girls? Yeah, like, why do you have a thing for babies and little girls? Next thing about Leo is Leo within the flock. Because I hang out with Leo all day, and I mentioned he's possessive over me, he is, like, anti-possessive over the rest of the birds. He does not want them involved in my life. He is not afraid to go bully the birds. 
But when he tries to bully Vinny, it's kind of the funniest thing. When they're on top of the shower and Leo goes to bully Vinny, and Vinny's like, what? What you trying to do? And then Leo goes, oh, okay, that's not gonna work. Yeah, never mind. Um, I'll just sit here. So they do integrate and everything because obviously I hang out with all of them at the same time, like right now. This is a very normal situation for us. But Leo just really is a little bully. I still see a feather on me in the corner of my eye. Leo likes to whistle. I have heard him do a lot of different things lately that I hadn't heard him do before. So I do realize that he has a little bit of creativity in his whistling vocabulary. And I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of new things. As far as him taking initiatives like he did when he wanted to come see Bella and leaving the kitchen to come into the living room, which I call a development in birds. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Developments mean that the bird is getting less shy, they're learning how to navigate the house, they're feeling more comfortable, but it's a bad thing because it's when you gotta start watching out for them and all the trouble that they cause, especially if you have more than one bird. But I'm always proud of what I call developments. And I believe that Leo being a sixth bird is developing a little bit slowly, but but of course in a shy manner, not in a slow manner of capability. He's very capable. So for example, if you have only one bird, you're gonna find out that it's so smart and responsive and entertaining. And every bird that you get after that also has all those capabilities, but the work that you were able to put into the first bird when he was alone will really, really make a difference and show through, especially with birds like African greys. So that's just something to note, but of course, every Every bird has its own personality and can shine and grow. And I'm just waiting for Leo to have that day and that moment. He is very communicative though. Right now he's tapping on a water bottle telling me that he's thirsty. Birds are very aware of liquids. So if you ever see your bird touching a bottle, chances are that he's thirsty. You wanna come here and get some? Picasso came too, cause Picasso's thirsty. Okay, first we'll give Leo some water. You want some water? You want some water? No, are you mad? You mad at Leo? That's how Leo indicated he wanted water. Very smart, nice development. Able to drink from the bottle. Let's talk about Leo and George. Leo's a really good bird, so I can put him on anybody. If somebody wants to hold him, I can be confident that he's not going to bite. But if you make the wrong approach with Leo, like how some people do when they move fast around the bird, or they're like, oh, hey, and go above the head, then Leo doesn't really appreciate that. Approaches everything with Leo. So him and George get along fine, but he really makes it obvious that he loves me the most, and that's not always fun for George. George, but he definitely keeps trying. He loves food. This bird is extremely food driven. Even in all his silence, you can tell when he wants something that you're eating. He makes the cutest little beeping, like squeaking noises, like you can hear them right now. Even if you're eating far away, he'll start doing this as if to say, are you coming to give me some food? And of course I always include him. He can eat like there's no tomorrow. It's unbelievable actually. He's kind of like his own burrito. Look at him. Huh? Look, you see how he is? He doesn't want anybody else next to his mommy. But I love them and I love you. But my other birds, they don't care. They know that they have a very secure position within the family. As you could see, Jersey is not phased. Picasso's not really phased, right? You're not phased. Here he goes. He's gonna go up the shoulder and he's gonna try to bully Picasso. And Picasso's gonna be like, that's nice for you, buddy, but I'm here. So that's kind of the dynamic of Leo's relationships. See, now he's kind of fluffed his feathers, which means he's kind of about to give up. And then he's gonna pipe his little head down. Yeah, and chill out. Right, baby, you got a little nervous. Overall, I am just having the best time with Leo. I find him to be very therapeutic. His feathers are so beautiful and soft. He's a gorgeous bird. As you guys will see from my Instagram, I'm kind of obsessed with taking pictures of him. I don't know how I ended up with all these birds in this video, but I'm really happy that they're behaving. Right, baby? You're okay. You're okay. Mommy loves you just as much. 
It's very important to have alone time with all birds just to de-stress them a little bit, make them feel like they're number one. Right, Jersey? Yeah, so those two, that's what they do. It never gets too serious. Picasso's not scared of anything. It's really funny. Overall, I would say Leo is just very, very therapeutic, relaxing, and a perfect sixth bird. With that being said, there is probably no perfect seventh bird because Leo has taken the cake on that one. That is all guys. I hope you enjoyed this Leo update. I had so much fun telling you guys all about his little personality and quirks. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Marlene McCohen where you can see these guys all day and what they are up to. I love you guys so much. Oh,